Great, and we'll do, it's a super short um, presentation today. Again, and for, for those of you who are new to the process, I think, Melissa, you've had a, an onboarding already, but um, it is pretty light um, in terms of going through you know, actual project content, because I know so many of you have seen this um, already. So um, next slide, it's this, this is our agenda. It's basically, we're reviewing some things in the current planning process, and then taking a look at and getting your feedback on next steps in the planning process, super basic. Is there anything I left off? I, you, you saw the agenda that, um, that, you, that you all want to talk about or add to the agenda. We're, we're pretty flexible here. All right, well, if something, if something comes up, just uh, put it in the chat and we'll add it to the end. So um, actually, can you go back one slide, Erica? Yeah, so really quickly, just covering, uh, I, I think um, some, someone mentioned this earlier, we have a new name and, and as of, uh, I don't know, late October. So it's official, um, for, the Community Economic Resilience Fund is now California Jobs First. Uh, so this is just a little overview of how we're, and we're, we're really still in transition for the, for the title. Um, we're still using the same email with SURF. The, the web, website is still the same. So we're sort of using this hybrid version right now, California Jobs First, parentheses SURF, until we get brand guidelines from the state, which have not come out yet. We, some of us who attended the um, California Economic Summit back in October got a preview of it. They're going to brand it with all kind of the, a lot of the administration's other initiatives, so, you know, the, sort of the California for all type brand. And, and again, I, we may have talked about this last meeting, but we were told this is really to, to give it a more understandable, approachable name that it's about creating jobs and uh, economic mobility. So there you go. Um, I I think you're being optimistic, Stacy. I think I think the reason they changed the name is that there's no money, so they wanted to drop the fund. <laughs> well, there still is money, but uh, yeah, we all we all know the the rather bleak um, revenue forecast uh, for the state of California. Uh, what sixty eight billion dollar deficit for twenty four and thirty billion dollars uh, forecasted thereafter. So yeah, I think we're gonna be glad to hold on to the money allocated to this program and when we start talking about our work for next year the word leverage will probably come in a lot because <laughs> how can we how can we leverage uh federal funding and other sources since uh yeah state funding is not looking really promising beyond what's already there uh any other questions on this i mean i i don't have a lot of answers i was on i, I can't remember which meeting but somebody just gave out the go the governor's office phone number when questions were asked about the rebranding so i won't go that far but look we'll, we'll you know we'll wait for state brand guiding guidelines before changing anything else so so stacy just so yeah. i'm clear um the name is the only thing that's really changing i mean other than the budget issues but in terms of the uh, the concept and the uh, how it might be implemented statewide, the, a lot of that is still intact, or all of it's still intact. All of it is still intact, and and again, I you know we we were we've really been um, given the messaging and 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 told that the whole California Jobs First region region by region approach throughout the state. As you'll recall, there's 13 mm -hmm. California Jobs First regions, 13 planning collaboratives, that this is sort of the, the economic development strategy that um, the state is taking and that these regions would stay in place. And, okay. and the idea, so the you know, yeah, that, you know, through Catalyst, as, as you may recall, um, now there's funding and and the directive to continue with regional collaborative planning, continue the high road transition collaboratives through 2026. But really, the what I heard from the state leaders in Office of Planning and Research, uh, Labor and Workforce Development Agency, and GoBiz was keep thinking along that way. You know, keep keep thinking regionally that these regions will stay in place. But I'm sure we'll hear more about that as this develops. Okay, great. Thank, yeah, thank you for that. 
yeah, that we, went, we might need to stick together beyond 2026, which I personally don't think is a bad idea anyway, no matter what the state tells us. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> next slide. So just a quick review of our of our timeline for just for the kind of for the first half of, of 2024. So we'll, we'll talk about this in a second. Um, the, the Catalyst Pre-Development Program application was submitted to the state last week. Um, right now, um, SBC staff is still furiously working to compile the, the first big, del big deliverable to, to the state, the Regional Summary Report Part 1. Um, that is due at the end of the month. Um, we're hard at work, really, and this is a very data-driven document compiling data on um, you know, jobs, kind of the economic situation, stakeholder analysis, public health, a number of things coming together to kind of give a snapshot of where this region is. And then um, starting in January, so we'll turn that into the state and then really starting in January, take that all that data and information that's been compiled in that summary report and with the HRTC and subcommittees really start working that, um, working with all that information to review it, see what's missing, see what needs expansion. Uh, and, and eventually we'll talk about this in a minute, turn that into um, a strategies report that's due, um, due in June. And that's really, I think of the way I've been thinking of this and Kristen and Erica, <laughs> Tell me if I'm wrong. I think of this uh, the 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 first part is sort of a midterm, and then the the strategies document that we'll will send in in June as the final. That's the final report. That's really the the document that's supposed to tell our story and the, and the efforts of this uh, planning uh, project that we're currently in right now. That's um, a great analogy, Stacy. Okay. Yeah. And we are cramming for that midterm, man. <laughs> We're gonna ace it too. We're gonna ace it. <laughs> we are. Yeah, I have no doubt. We we've got A plus students here. Um all right. So and then continuing on, we'll our next HRT, you know, we have an HRTC meeting next week. The next one will be in February. Um, you know, so we're we're gonna continue working on this strategy document. And it's my, you know. You all didn't really get to get very involved in the first report, but you know the HRTC will have a, a you know a big hand in crafting this strategies report. So that we have that on you know kind of dotted those milestones on this timeline throughout. Um, and so we've submitted the catalyst application. The actual funding will be awarded not until May. Um, so catalyst you know isn't kind of going to be an immediate insertion of cash. Um, in, in, into our hands, you know, in, in the early part of the year, that'll probably happen, you know, toward the second part of the year. We'll get the funding awarded, but we'll be busy through the first half of the year, really fine tuning and digging into what awards should be made precisely with Catalyst funding. And we're going to talk about that later. Um, yeah, and then June, continuing with HRTC meetings. And then July is that big milestone of you know, implementation dollars becoming available through uh, through an application process. Um, so we're in the planning phase. We're you know we're planning kind of on two two parallel tracks with Catalyst, getting those projects ready that that aren't ready you know for implementation, and then the implementation application will have identified the projects that are ready to go and can be and we can apply for funding for starting next summer. Any questions kind of on that timeline? And we're going to talk, dig into a lot of this, uh, what's coming up, uh, it, you know, kind of have a broader discussion in a minute. Quick question, Stacey, going yeah. forward, is this kind of a, is this going to be an annual process in the future? Is this how it would look in future years as well? That I, you know, I, I doubt it would look exactly like this just because, because I don't think um, they'll, they'll be, the focus won't be so much on, research, data collection, and strategy development once we have the strategy in place. And Kristen and Erica, jump in if you think I'm wrong about that, because you're you, you're here from the state more than I do. But I think the the in terms of an, continuing the HRTC, I would imagine it would look similar, but not not the the regional 
summary and strategy documents, those types of things. Got it. That makes sense. Yeah. The, um, it, yeah. Go the catalyst ahead. funding allows for the update of the research. And because now we set a baseline with this deliverable that we'll turn in at the end of the year. But the idea is then we move beyond the research phase into implementation. So I think, honestly, from my perspective, the best thing that has come out of this process so far is all of the subcommittee work and the HRTC and truly the conversations about how the region can move forward. And now to build off that momentum and actually get things done. So I don't think it'll look exactly like this on a year to year basis, but at least through 2026, we have, uh, hopefully, <laughs> everything to prove we'll have the momentum and the funding to move forward as a region. Great. And Jaren, go ahead. Thank you. Um, we're working with a few people that have already submitted project ideas and developing a few proposals, and I'm still not clear when I can actually say that they might be putting in the application and getting funded on this. Well, we're going to talk about kind of the, the the project identification process a little later, but um, you know, so, so if you don't mind holding that question until we get there, but I would also turn it over to Kristen or Erica if you if you want to just have a general comment. I, I mean, I think it's it's valid. Everybody's anxious to get to projects, but we're we are still in the middle of a planning process, so. Yeah, just the, the quick answer, Jaron, and thank you for that question because everybody asks it and obviously mm -hmm. everybody wants to get something done. Uh, there are there currently is no criteria developed for the implementation by the right. state or by our HRTC. We do have input into that. There is also no explicit criteria for catalyst funding yet. So that's a process that we'll go through uh, and co-create with the HRTC what how we want our region's criteria, but there will also be, we must adhere to the state's goals and guidelines. One other thing I just want to say is that every project will be included in the regional plan. Not every project will be eligible for catalyst or implementation funding. However, all the projects are worthy, and, and, and what our team intends to do is to help identify other forms of funding that could potentially fund those uh, projects. I realize, I think I'm just showing a screen, but anyway. Yeah. So I well, hope that makes sense. I and mean, I, don't I, think, to all the I think agenda, but I was going to say, I think that's wise. Um, I, yeah. I still would really like to get a date because I see Catalyst funding awarded in May. What is the round one project submission? Whatever the criteria are, whatever the state stuff, I think we can, <clears> before <throat> that, do some guesstimating on what would probably be a project they would take and identify future funding as something we're already going to be kind of working on. But I would really like to say that in, you know, it's July and July is going to be the first round of project funding. That is when we need to have a date to have our app ready and submit and then stay tuned for what we need to put into it. Right now, I'm not even sure, is it is it 2025? Is it August of 24? It's really hard to even determine what projects might be eligible within that time frame because some of them have other grant funds that are time sensitive. Um, I, you know, there are ones that I would exclude based on that timeline. So I completely understand, Jaron. We would love a date as well. Let me just uh, reiterate, May is when the announcement for awards will come. We do not anticipate contracting or funds to flow until July, which then puts us in position to apply for those catalyst funds, the nine million bucket that you're talking about. So I would just conservatively put it a little bit later in the summer, knowing how the timeline has gone with the state. We, we hear you 100%. It's a, it's sort of a frustration we all hear, but I don't want to derail this section. We can talk about it more in the project section, but what's important to note is as Stacy um, said, starting in January is really when we shift to more strategic planning from the research phase. And that is when we'll take the projects we have to date we will, there are a lot of similarities with the projects. And remember, we're trying to look at this on a regional basis as opposed to a project that might benefit one small jurisdiction or county that we, oh. and we need to look at uh, collectively how the projects 
benefit the disinvested communities and meet the goals of the state. But that, and that'll start taking place in January, at least the categorization of the projects. Great. And again, not, yeah, yeah, we're going to we're going to dig into this a little bit later. And I think the kind of feedback you just gave us, Jaron, is, is, is helpful. Um, I, I know a lot of this still it's frustrating to have it still be so theoretical and not not as concrete as we would like. But uh, we're looking for we'll, we'll be looking for kind of group discussion and feedback on 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 the you know pre-development activities, what needs to happen to get the projects ready to go. And, um, you know, just the whole project submission process, which, as Kristen just said, really hasn't been uh, developed yet, other than we are taking your ideas, where it's like, keep them coming, keep the project uh, proposals coming to us. And uh, in the new year, we'll really dig in. So uh, next slide, please. So really, again, I'm, I, you know, I, di I didn't include any information about the Catalyst pre-development program because just most of the participants here have already seen all this information. So for those of you that haven't, we can go back and talk about it. What I wanted to share today was really the application outcomes. And fortunately we have uh, Kristen and Erica who are, you know, are as, as the, the, the leads on, on I think I can, still doesn't roll off the tongue, California jobs first <laughs> um, can, can dig into this, but this is, this is what SBC applied for, and we I shared the the actual application narrative in your uh, in the agenda. We also I think set that out to all HRTC participants yesterday or the day before. So if you read through it, you saw it's incredibly high level. There was nothing very specific, and uh, but we did want to share with you just sort of an overview of what SBC applied for. We applied for the nine million dollars for a project development. Uh, 1.5 million for sector investment uh, coordinators, which would be, again, the, in the application, it stated up to five subcontracts with expertise in some of the, um, the, in the priority sectors that we've been working to identify. Um, and then the, the programmatic side, this is really administration of the program and we, and SBC applied for 2.8 million for, for that. But again, that's just the administrative uh, fiscal side of the house. So um, yeah, questions on that. Jaron, go ahead. Thank you. I'm confused on two things. One is I see with the funding buckets, it's added sustainable tourism, recreation and small business and small business is very broad. And so I'm wondering when that change happened. Um, and then the second is if, you know, the outline of subcontracts to expertise, it feels like that's stuff we should already be doing and trying to bring in, you know, industry folks and trying to bring in uh, UC Ag and Natural Resource or whoever. So what are these people doing if we're already trying to submit somewhat developed ideas? Because I'm not coming up with, you know, let's say it's a, we, we think we need a, a biomass plant and and then they develop the entire proposal. We're going to develop a proposal for that um, and then bring that in that that has hopefully some legs on it. Hi, Karen. I'll just I'm just going to just jump in on that really quick. So thanks, Eric. The Catalyst uh, funding buckets. We can't actually we can't use any of that funding, and we're not supposed to do any Catalyst activities before that is awarded and that funding comes through. So that's one thing that we have to keep in mind this next year. Is while we're still in the planning phase, we're using planning dollars. And then we'll make that transition when we get the Catalyst Award. And I think that you know all that is to say, Jared, you're right. And again, we're it's 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 a it's confusing. You know, you sort of have to. There's a bit of cognitive dissonance involved in this whole thing, because of course there are. I, I can tell you there are already project proposals submitted for 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 biomass facilities, and and that's no surprise to to I think any of us in the region, and. We can still be creating the process for project identification and project prioritization and determining what what needs there are around project pre-development before cattle, as Erica just said, before the the you know the catalyst pre-development program really gets to work. I hear but, you. I, yeah. To, to kind of specify, and I don't mean to be pushy. I know we only have a limited amount of time, and we don't meet that often. What I mean is, it looks like we're hiring five people. 
um, to basically do the stuff that we're already doing where I'd rather have somebody that is within my county being able to be a, you know, if we're hiring staffing, handle the surf process. Um, and I don't, or have that money end up going into some type of pre-development app because one and a half million is a, it's a substantial portion. I thought all the research costs were going to be under the programmatic kind of overhead already. This is, um, I don't know, this is just new to me, so. I think if I'm understanding your question, Jaren, so that sector investment coordinator bucket will be invested in the region. So our goal as much as possible is to keep whoever those five, it's positions or organizations, but we want to keep that within our seven county region as much as possible. We're not we're not going to be hiring contractors from outside to come in. I don't know if that is helpful for you. No, I mean, I, I don't want us to hire staff to review work that we're already kind of compiling together rather than hiring somebody that can help put those applications together in the first place kind of broadly um, is, the, is the concern. It's just five additional research positions. No, 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 I think we're on the same page. I think what you're saying is kind of what we're planning on doing. We're hoping to, to utilize this funding to empower existing um, uh, opportunities and activities that are going on rather than hire someone to start like a whole new process. So if there's already someone who's working in the region on forestry, uh, you know, workforce development, just as an example, right, then, you know, when that time comes and we start looking at this a little bit more closely, we would be hopefully funding those people that are already doing that work. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I mean, th those. I don't mean those people are already employed. You know, we have, for example, a woody biomass person in our county, a PhD level one. Um, that's somebody that already has a full time job that we're already as part of their job engaging to be part of potentially those proposals. And the HRTC has a wealth of experience and diversity in it. So I'm just not sure why we're hiring additional expertise outside of the research costs. Um, but it, it's, it's fine. I, we don't need to spend any more time on it. And, um, I'll just jump in really quick too. I, um, I think that you mentioned, um, the need for bringing together the efforts of the, of the, you know, the UCs and, and the colleges as well. And I think having a person dedicated to really bringing in the expert that you're talking about, Jaren, and bringing everyone together and, um, and supporting that, I think, it's, it's a lot of work to actually, you know, build a new healthcare program, for example, and to actually make those connections. So I, I think this person would be there to leverage what's already existing and make sure that the work isn't done in silos and that um, people are working together and really convening all of the, you know, industry experts in that field with the um, workforce development boards with education and so ensuring that programs are built to meet those needs and that jobs are being create you know jobs that are um, high paying jobs right and so really coordinating those efforts so i think i think it makes a lot of sense but um but i understand what, where you're coming from as well and i just want to add that i the hrtc will will have a role in determining what these inve sector investment coordinators are and do. And thank you, Mary, for that perspective. Um, Rosemary, go ahead. Thank you, Stacy. Um, and you're, the SBC folks may have already answered this question, but I, what I'm wondering is um, how is SBC looking at initiatives at the state okay. level? Sorry, dog, dogs barking. Um, but is SBC looking at initiatives at the state level like um, what came out of Department of Conservation, Elizabeth Betancourt and yes. the Wood Utilization Group as an example? Um, yeah, okay, so you are looking at that. And do we get points then for, um, I, I'm saying points, but uh, do, is is it advisable for us to leverage off of um, the what they have recommended um, in terms of the kinds of projects that we bring forward? 
Yes, I, I think the answer is, is yes. I think it's and a challenge, kind of similar to to the point Mary was making. You know, to to articulate really clearly how all of this is being brought together, I, I think is going to be a, a a big challenge of the next part of this planning process. You know, to make it clear, like, hey, yeah, we we are we know and and are and are informed by the work being done say by the wildfire and forest resilience task force or doc Pro department of conservation programs or um other you know just i mean workforce development is its whole you know a whole other <laughs> you know area of state and you know regional local government and organization that you know in and of itself has has so many threads to weave together so i think that's going to be a big challenge um as we move into project development and development of this regional strategy to to really demonstrate how all of this is coming together it's going to be a challenge and we're going to need everyone's assistance so please keep reminding us and of course if you know if if you have ideas or you come across a state program and you know are, hey are we are you aware of this are we looking at this don't ever hesitate to send that to us okay yeah. i appreciate that yeah. i will forward to you an email exchange that i've had with the chair of the natural resources department at UC Merced um, about residencies. And it's something that with respect to rural health care that the SBC folks might not be aware of, but might want to be aware. Yes, that, that would be really helpful. I think for all of us collectively, we should, you know, let's, let's work um, under, under the assumption that uh, we don't know about something and it's it's always help to, helpful to raise awareness. So thank you. Any other you questions? Bet. Yeah, we'll, we'll move on. Um, I definitely want to want us to have, a, you know, maybe a, a half hour to, to get to have open discussion about a, a few things toward the end of the agenda. So the next slides, I, I included this in your agenda packet. These are just, you know, we've at every meeting we've talked about. So if you we've talked about um, the priority industry sectors and the development of those, they are still in development, but uh, I did, I shared with you the, the working definitions uh, that were kind of demonstrate where we are so far with development of the sectors. So Erica, if you switch to the next slide, um, so the, you're familiar with this already, sustainable recreation and tourism, and I'm going to move through these, I hope fairly quickly and just, I'm not going to read this out, just ask if you have any questions. This is one that really hasn't changed since our last discussion, but any questions on this working definition? And Rosemary, do you still have your hand up or is it just from last time? Okay. <laughs> uh, and then, so next. I need so to this... deal with dogs, sorry. Okay, about... yeah, uh, mine, mine's barking, but I, that's why I got my headphones on, so can't hear. There was a mouse in the house and it's just still very upsetting. Um, so this uh, formerly known as forest economy, uh, an expanded title um, based on feedback that we've gotten uh, from, especially from non-forested uh, parts of this diverse region. So natural and working lands is the working title for this. Any questions here? And then clean energy. So next slide, uh, clean energy and energy resilience. Um, also the same really as, as prior discussion. And then finally, sustainable agriculture and ranching. And I think one, and one thing I've noted that I think is something that I hope the HRTC and SBC will think about, you know, in, in state programs, ag is under natural and working lands. So is that, you know, so that might be something that we want to keep, or ag needs to be called out discreetly. But I think, yeah, that could be a point of confusion um, to kind of, Rosemary, to your point, if we're, if we're interfacing with state programs, kind of explaining what we mean by that. And then of course, uh, community health care. Um, same and we, you know, still just as a reminder that we we really see this as a 
as a sector that needs further development, you know, as, as Jaron mentioned earlier, you know, when it comes to natural and working lands and things like wood utilization, there are already projects that are pretty far along and pretty well defined. Um, you know, what a program like California Jobs First might be able to do in terms of investment or, you know, in facilities or investment in workforce development. So community health care maybe needs a little more fleshing out, though. Um, since we have Mary here, I would say that probably the clearest uh, or, or the the most defined uh, thread through woven through all of these sectors and certainly here in healthcare is uh, training, you know, workforce education and training, workforce development, especially with uh, community colleges and the K through 16 efforts. So um, we really look forward to working with you and Mary and having you help us uh, connect all the dots. So any any uh, thoughts or comments on the sectors as they stand thus far? And I think there's a lot of opportunity to leverage with K-16. So K-16 is focused on three pathways, healthcare, education, and engineering slash IT. So um, there's a lot that can be leveraged together for that. Um, and that's 18 million with the same the same region, um, but it's focused on building high school to college to career pathways with work-based learning involved as well. That's great. And I think I may, I might be wrong, but I think there we're going to get a, a, a presentation at next week's HRTC meeting on the K-16 initiative. I'm not, I'm talking to Brandon after this, so I'll ask him about that okay. if, if he's doing that. Um, so Brandon's, um, so they um, will be soon hiring the the executive director for that. Um, just my knowledge from it is just from working with Columbia the last year on it. And um, and so I'm, I'll ask Brandon though. I don't know if you invited him to speak on that or. Um, yeah, one of our, either Erica or Kristen probably can, can answer that. If not at this meeting, I know there was a lot to cover. Uh, I'm sure we'll we'll get a presentation on it in a future meeting because to me it's it's pretty exciting, um, you know, and, and central to uh, you know creating high quality, high paying jobs in the region. Oh, Stacy, really quick, Alina yeah. Trenton is going to give a quick presentation at the HRTC meeting on the K sixteen. Great. And so, so um, yeah, yeah, fantastic. So yeah, be sure to tune in for that if you can. All right, so uh, if no other questions, we'll move on. Next slide, please. And um, so now really moving into the part of the agenda, talking next steps. And I, I, I did not prepare slides for this other than this one to give you just a snapshot of what's in the regional summary plan that's due in June. So again, as you know, while the, the, the regional summary part one was really kind of data-driven, compiling some of the research focus groups, so, so both qualitative and quantitative data. Um, the plan is strategy. You see the word strategy is in there like 10 times. <laughs> it's a strategy. So, uh, and, and these are some of the points that, uh, you know, that'll, that it will cover. Um, and so we have our work cut out for us in the next six months um, to develop this plan and um, to work on project development. So that's really what I wanted to get into. If I can, I keep, I have too many documents open here. I just want to make sure I'm actually following the agenda. So um, if you can stop screen share, we'll just have an open discussion now. Um, so if you're following along on the agenda, we are now to item three, next steps in planning process. So um, just a quick update on the project identification process. Um, again, we are still in early stages. Um, as many of you know, and we could, and we'll be sure to share the link out again in, in the meeting notes and Erica or Erica B or Erica H or Kristen, if somebody could wants to drop the uh, project identification link in the chat, um, we we do have a, a form through which we are tracking um, projects, and I think we've had um, through that form over thirty projects submitted to date, and I would and and they range from um, infrastructure projects. Uh, some local government, some private industry, um, some programmatic concepts, some work and workforce development concepts is how I would really um, categorize those. And then some, actually, and David, I think this was 
your project that you'd mentioned here before, you know, something like a, you know, a tree nursery, you know, that, that's sort of a, in between, it's infrastructure and programming. Um, but so, so a pretty broad degree, but already through that project tracker, seeing some clear themes emerge. And so that'll be something we'll be working on. And, and I know um, we'll be developing, I, you know, some sort of dashboard um, and, you know, means through which we're sharing projects, project development and, and project ideas with the HRTC and subcommittees. <clears throat> but we've also had, not necessarily through the tracker, we've also had project submissions coming coming to us just, you know, via email. Um, I know, for instance, uh, Jaron mentioned this in Tuolumne County, there's, there's a really wonderful concerted effort to start with pro thinking of project development um, on a county, um, kind of county by county level. I, I presented uh, earlier this week to the Inyo County Board of Supervisors. They started to have a discussion led by their staff about what types of projects Inyo County might want to see, which uh, Jen, I thought that was a really productive uh, discussion. So um, I would just put that out there to other uh, governments and entities on this call. If, if that's something you're interested in having SBC assist you with or, or present at, we're happy to do that. Um, but again, really the, the, the projects, project development process will be getting going in earnest in the new year. So, um, you know, we, we, any questions on that? And again, we're not gonna have a lot of specific answers, but if you already have ideas and thoughts on, on kind of project submission and tracking that you wanna share, go ahead, Mary. Um, yeah, I have a quick, I have a quick question um, or an idea. I'm, I'm thinking if there are already 30 project proposals, I think it would be really helpful at next Friday's meeting to maybe have a list of them um, just to inspire other members or to see where, um, I think it's helpful to see what, what ideas are out there um, and, um, and even to leverage them with um, some of the project proposals with the K-16 collaborative too. And, um, and just see like, maybe there's a project that um, Amador County wants to build a new healthcare or, you know, do a new healthcare program. And maybe there's also an interest for Inyo County and maybe they can collaborate together and, you know, learn best, best practices or something like that. So I don't know if it's possible to share them, if you're allowed to share them, but I think if, if there was a one page little info sheet about what ideas are out there, it might not to make more work for you, but I think it would be really interesting to see and people might be more inspired to create a project proposal when they see what some things are coming through right now. I, I really wanted to tag in and say that I think Mary's 100% correct. Um, we have some ideas. They are specific to thinking of our county, but many have a regional application or maybe similar to other specific ones. But we currently don't have any process of cross-pollinating these between counties, except me just going out and grabbing lunch with one of the other people and talking to them. Um, I would really love to see SBC facilitate that um, and be able to facilitate between the regions what ideas are out there for us, you know, Merced's a neighbor as well, that they're looking at that we should be considering. It's kind of been a lot of we're developing something and maybe sending it in. I would love to see more running into it that another county is doing to find some inspiration or SBC sending some stuff back to us to say, hey, what do you think about this? Yeah, I'd like to weigh in a little bit, too. I think Mary's got a good idea. Uh, Stacy, you were, you were involved in the Sierra uh, SRTI project where the projects were suggestions and and requests were shared among everybody and I think the process worked fairly well it was a great way to um, because a lot of the ideas were duplicates and so people or, or were things that people could could combine on and so, so I think if we don't know what other people are thinking about we don't take get, get to take advantage of it Stacy I'll, I'll help out and jump in here um, so we appreciate everyone's comments, and I think we're actually, Stacey's going to go over the project identification process, and we're going to go over that next week at the HRTC meeting as well. And this is definitely something that's going to be a process, and it's going to take some time. Um, and so we're, su we're so glad to hear that everyone is so excited to talk about projects and start working on that. Um, 
next week the plan is what well, we could we could definitely share out what's been shared so far it's actually more than 30 projects i think it's like over 60 um as of right now so the list is growing very rapidly which is so great it's so awesome to see um but one of the tough conversations that we need to have uh, with the subcommittees and the hrtc before we can even really start diving into the project details which there's going to be a whole workshop series that's going to have to happen. Um, so yes, you're totally on par, Mary. That's definitely what we're going to be. It's going to be like a six to eight month process. Um, but something that we keep hearing and all the feedback that we've gotten in the last you know, three or four HRTC meetings and all the subcommittee meetings is that there's really this, there's this huge ask for like a strategic planning process. Because there's before we can even start allocating funding towards projects, you know, we're getting told that, you know, we don't have capacity, we don't even have someone, you know, we don't even have the the right pipeline to implement, um, you know, if if there was funding available. And so it's like there's some pre work that we need to do. And so that's where we're going to be starting next week. Is like, okay, what do we need? before that funding is available? What do we need to start putting in place? Um, where do we need to start building capacity? And then we're gonna, in the beginning of the year, so starting January, February, March, there's gonna be a huge strategic planning phase that's gonna have to happen. And we're gonna try and you know, put together these projects in buckets. And so they're not duplicative, right, David? We don't wanna have, <laughs> You know, all we want to organize these projects and then have a conversation with everyone and be like, okay, now how can we be most effective? And I think Kristen mentioned it earlier that all of them are going to go in the regional plan, um, but not all of them are going to be, are going to qualify for catalyst or implementation funding. So there's going to be a lot of work that's going to have to go into organizing everything, identifying the funding sources, and then what is the need before that funding even becomes available. So it's so great to hear everyone get excited about it, but we just want to make sure that everybody knows there's a lot of work we have to do before we can even get to that point. Well, Erica, I want to I want to push back on that because I mean there is the formal process of going through all of these projects, the project ID committee. I think what Mary is talking about and in the chat is something much simpler is why don't we just have it's a Google Drive or even a separate meeting outside these committees where we can talk about the things to even kind of inspire some early thought because I don't know, I'm I'm not waiting and I'm sure that some of the other counties aren't with all the applications that have been coming in until, you know, catalyst funding's done and the project ID and the criteria are all removed. We're making guesstimates and identifying funding sources and looking at these buckets and trying to, you know, work on projects during that entire time. So, I mean, can't there be a more informal way of just being able to share these ideas and talk about it? From what I'm hearing on some of the other subcommittees, you know, not having that space has devolved some of the conversations into, you know, hey, we're working on this. Does anybody want it? Rather than what the committee agenda is, because they don't have another space to basically talk to all of our colleagues in each group and say, we, you know, we want to see what you think about this in a very kind of early, early way. And um, just to piggyback off of that, um, I would, my idea was, was just a piece of paper that just had a, a quick list. Um, I, I know next Friday, I'm sure you have a, a, you know, an agenda of what's happening and, and I know you'll have a process for approving the projects. It was just um, something that could inspire people to make more projects or to combine things. Um, and then um, not necessarily to, to change the agenda of the meeting or anything like that, but I, um, but it's um, it's it's obviously your meeting next week and everything. Um, I just thought it would be fun to see, you know, maybe what if there were thirty of the or you know twenty of them that were almost the same thing, right? That would be kind of cool to see that. Um, yeah. So yeah, we can definitely send that out. So right now, our entire team, uh, we've we're faced with some deadlines, and our our biggest deadline is that December thirty first, our big deliverable uh, with the state, and so. I think the first week of January, we could definitely go through and organize that spreadsheet so it would be a little bit more readable for everyone and we could send that out so everyone could start seeing um, in the new year what's been submitted so far. So yeah, I do think that's a great idea.
Great. Well, I think, you know, to summarize, it, and one thing we will do is report out of, you know, from this committee at the HRTC meeting next week. So I am hearing loud and clear <laughs> that you want to that you want to talk projects and and see see what's going on, um, you know, in other spaces. And hopefully we'll, you know, soon, as Erica says, in the new year, we'll we'll get to a place that we're that's what we're actually doing in in this meeting too. Um, so, but <laughs> unfortunately, I have to take us back into <laughs> you know the the less concrete, uh, substantial world of project of, of of specific projects to just a discussion of pre development activities. And again, we we started talking about this in October, and we heard, um, you know, that I think as Jared noted in the chat that um, you know. Planning capacity is a pre-development activity that's needed. Well, what and what I'm hearing uh, from the subcommittee is a pre uh, one pre-development activity that um, at least this committee would like to see is having space to talk about projects and seeing sooner rather than later what those projects are. So to me, that is great feedback on what pre-development activities are needed. <laughs> Does that make sense? Um, but but generally, just opening it up, what other types of um, pre-development activities are needed? Um, and and we can kind of combine this. the The two bullet points um, that I put on here are, you know, a discussion about local government planning capacity, but that can really fall into this pre-development activity discussion. Um, opening it up, and you know, I don't want to put Heidi on the spot, but while we do have a representative from our state senator's office, just thinking too um, about the relationship with state programs and is there is there a need for more support, maybe kind of you know top down from from some of these state departments and agencies um, to help us develop activities that would be eligible for funding other than serve California jobs first. Jaron, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, what would be, I think, very helpful for me, we already kind of have an idea of the funding buckets, and I think all of us have a fairly broad idea of eligible funding that's already out there. I know, for one, I'm not really planning to try and submit or advocate for anything that's requiring surf money in the future to make it happen. I want it to always have a alternate type of path. Um, looking at that, having a list of big funds that are out there basically here's where the money is department of energy and looking at usd rural development and saying from you know your expertise and sbc's expertise maybe here's a few ideas of things that could be under that you know a couple page list the second would be reaching out to some of these organizations including the state senator's office reaching out to uc a and r reaching out to um you know the central sierra economic development district all these entities to basically try and submit What's on their radar and can they basically put some stuff back towards us rather than us reaching out and seeing if they can support our ideas? I'd love to hear proposals from them on what they think, you know, the region should be pursuing and if they have funding or expertise available. That's great. Got it. Totally, totally agree. That would be extremely useful and and, and a running list. Um. Anyone else? Stacey, I'm yes, not sure Jen. if this is, I, yeah, I'm not sure if this is fitting in what you're asking, but something that's come up with us is, and I think it came up on this meeting once before, is sort of a region wide NEPA CEQA task force or something. And I'm not sure if that fits in this, what you're asking now. But anyway, that's that's a thought that keeps coming up around here. Yeah, that, and that absolutely. This is a an open kind of a, your time for open discussion. So so that absolutely fits. But I think that yes, that has come up before. And I think through um, the Eastern Sierra Council of Governments, we kind of have a great model for it. Uh, you know, so so that's something that could emerge as a as a project. Stacey, um, I wanted to throw in, so early on, I definitely was one of the ones saying we need money into pre-development and then capacity. I know for us, we've got 
two to three kind of full-time staff at the county with natural resources, with economic development, and with special projects, meeting on this and putting a lot of time into it. What we really could use is somebody, because they're split between their other work um, across the county, something that can support them in a very direct way. The problem is, is I think if we're looking at healthcare at a seven county kind of regional thing, as opposed to being able to have a direct staff person that that team works with here and every county has that, if, you know, I would assume we're already putting a good amount of staffing into it and it's just the details of pulling up these proposals, it's much less regional strategies right now um, to kind of get the detailed work. So that's uh, that's where I think some of that staffing support, I'm afraid we might get a researcher that's kind of far away that doesn't actually help with what we need, which is working on, you know, our apps or taking our apps and trying to bring them to other counties or bring other counties to us. We're just going to get somebody that says, you know, I'm a healthcare expert or a natural resource expert. You know, I think biomass is a really great thing. And we're all like, well, yeah, great. You know, fantastic. I, I, I'm just going to say, and, and I don't think, uh, Erica or Kristen would stop me. That is certainly not <laughs> the intent at all of, of the sector investment or or any aspect of this program to have, you know, a, you know, a, a researcher in a distant land um, not helping you on the ground develop projects. I think I think the the intent is to do the opposite. Yeah, I, Am I, I right. <laughs> you're you're 100 percent right, Stacey. And I, this circles back to Mary's comment and Jaren's comment and David's comment. And we've already started looking at the synergies of the projects and um, Erica's gonna kill me, but I'll do it. I'll take it on myself. But I think we can at least have, we'll take all the projects, at least categorize them so people can see, because as you, as you mentioned, we are seeing synergies and um, there are patterns and there, yeah, biomass, healthcare, workforce training, all the things are HRTC and, and tribal. And our subcommittees have been talking about. And what's important, Jaron, is at least with the SURF project, most likely applications for funding, particularly in implementation, are going to be looking at how they impact the broader region, not just one county in particular. And, and we can pull from that. You know, a, a project in Tuolumne County will, will create jobs in neighboring counties. But how will what is the economic multiplier of these projects? So uh, these are really important topics that came up today, but um, sorry, Erica, don't, don't shoot me, but I'll, I will put that slide together that shows at least the number of projects and, and sort of the, the general um, where they're coming from, because they, they're like every, if everybody, every county, there's not enough money for every county to build a three megawatt biomass plant. And David, I know you can't, but um <laughs> but you got your tree nursery, so we could do that. But, you know, there, there are synergies here and we want to leverage off of those synergies and build economies of scale and work with Mary on her workforce development programs, because there's no sense in having one healthcare workforce program to, you know, to benefit one tiny piece of a jurisdiction if we can scale that across the region. And that's that's the whole point of this particular program. I hope that makes sense. And yeah, I think it'd even be more helpful to have beyond just kind of a static slide. And, and I think that would be helpful in the, the the near term to see what projects have been submitted. I brought up something in the previous committee, too, was uh, there are entities in our county submitting projects that also our team isn't aware of. So there's not really a notification process to then be, you know, knowing what's uh, what's also coming in. But just setting up a regular space for cross collaboration between subcommittees and the HRTC, because the HRTC has things to do, and it's not very productive when there's 80 people there that are all trying to rely on that for surf stuff and questions. And I'm one of those people that is slowing down that meeting, you know, that should be kind of a small body. I wish there was a, a side one where we could regularly get those types of updates, talk about it. You know, even if we get a spreadsheet that has a project and it says uh, it's a utility solar field, um, you know, feasibility study that line is probably not going to be enough to really explain why that's a good idea, where the money's at. Um, but that's something that would be really cool to pitch to a group of kind of cross collaborative, you know, different subcommittee members. Yeah. And Jaron, I'll just reiterate, Stacy said it and Erica said it. This is our intent. 
beginning in the new year when we move into the strategy strategy section, because all of these um, applications, and by the way, what we have in our portal, they're not applications, they are project descriptions. So no one has submitted an actual application. We don't have, we don't know what the budgets are, et cetera, et cetera. But that is our intent. And you know, the HRCTC, as I said, right at the beginning of the, of the meeting, um, what I think the what's come out of this, uh, the best thing that's come out of this so far is that the region is talking, everybody's coming to the table. We want to build on that momentum and get these things done. So we always appreciate you making the meeting last longer, Jaren. All right, we're going to go through it. Uh, Rosemary has her hand up. I'm going to, but I want to call on everyone um, before we wrap things up and just make sure we've heard from everyone. Rosemary, go ahead. Yeah, just real quickly, when we talk about woody biomass, um, I'm sorry, I have sort of a one track mind. The feedstock availability pilot program, where does that stand and how, you know, how how can we, should we be thinking about building on whatever uh, concepts are coming out of that? Yeah, I mean, I, I that, that's another great example of a state initiative that will be kind of woven in to, to the project development. You know, for instance, I, you know, that's that's something I happen to know a little bit about as SBC had been involved. So for instance, you know, and I'm, please do not hold me to this. This is, incredibly theoretical, but say if, uh, you know, the the current I th thinking or proposal to, to form a joint powers authority to govern that, um, if there's a need for funding or further research about how that would work, perhaps that could be something, you know, that would be taken into consideration, uh, you know, for, for catalyst funding. But again, I, I please don't, that, I, that is not making any kind of a promise. I just wanted to give you a concrete example of how that might get woven in. Or, you know, in the same way, maybe we, you know, in one one meeting or, you know, we're considering the um, state wildfire enforced resilience task force wood utilization groups uh, recommendations that are currently in draft form. And we, we you know, we, systematically go through those to look for, you know, how they would apply to the region and could there be a need for further research or pre-development funding through that. So I, that's how I would see that working. But I guess from, from a purely mechanical process sort of standpoint, do we assume that SBC would put forward potential projects like creation of a JPA for feedstock um, availability or a feedstock management? Um, or should we be thinking about it as predicates for proposals for bioenergy facilities or some other wood utilization um, business? I mean, honestly, I would think it would be both. Okay. Kristen's nodding, so I didn't get that wrong. But, but again, I just I encourage everyone here to to not assume that that SBC knows. Or if you if you want to advocate for a particular direction, um, and advise SBC on hey, you know, like hey, I think you need to <laughs> consider this, or you know, or for, look at this for further development for a potential project. Please do that. And I don't mean okay. we don't mean to put the burden on you. That's the sort of thing when we do have the, the that I envision what happens in this sector investment coordination effort that will happen as part of Catalyst. That we will, as Mary said before, kind of somebody somebody who's making all the connections and making sure that that uh, projects aren't developing outside of the California Jobs First process in silos. That we're somebody who's really on the ground there you know, again, weaving all these threads together, connecting the okay. dots, whatever metaphor you want to use. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. we just, it, it's like Jaron, right? We'll just continue yeah. to pester you with questions. Please do. Yeah, you, you need <laughs> to keep pestering. It, that, that's, that's sort of your job. Okay, good to know. <laughs> it, it is. I mean, this is your, ultimately, this is your process. This is your plan. This is your region. I mean, well, I'm here too, uh, but but this is this is yours. You're the you're the you're the leaders. You're 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 part of this collaborative. So okay, yeah. thank you. Can um, I can I throw out though, Stacy? Is you know, and and this isn't at you, but we've just had a lot of these meetings, 
And yep. these feel a lot like the HRTC. They feel a lot like, I don't know, office hour ones. And it doesn't, I'm not sure really what's coming out. It seems like we're kind of getting information, which is somewhat helpful, but, um, you know, I'd rather us be able to, you know, the public one is kind of in a different category because we touch so many issues. We've already been kind of working on this stuff to an extent from all of our respective backgrounds that maybe if there's a way to give this group outside of whatever's established just with the SBC discussion stuff and strategy and all that, a, a little more tangible walkaways. Okay. Um, I just, I want to see the impact of kind of why we're meeting and what our input is actually going to it seems like we're really just coming in to get like questions answered on something that was already decided. And, and, you know, it could have really been sent in an email and I could have had this whole conversation there rather than like, we should all get together and talk about something that's not just a. Uh... Yeah. No, I, I believe me, I, I, I understand your frustration and hear you loud and clear and, I, for one, I mean, I think it's up to this committee, really, but as the facilitator, if there is a desire to have space to do the cross-collaboration work that Jaron's talking about, that is absolutely, and, and that's something, you know, to talk about what what is an effective role of this subcommittee, it, you know. We we're, we want to be mindful of your time. It's another meeting, or if it's if it's better to use this space to to dig into details. Um, let's let's make this subcommittee work the way that you want to. I, I want to go around. I'm mindful of time. I want to hear from from everyone. So if you don't mind, I'm going I'm going to go ahead and call on on some committee members we haven't heard from at all. I'm going to start with Michael. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I, I'm just kind of tracking and listening, but I don't. I haven't had anything specific to to okay. add at this point. Okay. Yeah. Don't mean to put y'all on the spot, but I just want to make sure there's space for everybody to contribute. So thanks. Yeah. No, that's okay. okay. And uh, Melissa. Or maybe I'll, I'll come back. How about I see Linda's face. So Linda. Um, thanks, Stacey. Um, you know, listening and kind of understanding what people are saying, but I, I feel the same. I feel like, okay, we are, have a lot of ideas. We're talking about them together. We're sort of, you know, in this closed group, if you will. Um, and the one question that I keep going back to is education. You know, where, and Mary, it's really good to see you. See you here. I'm happy that you joined um, our group because, you know, a lot of the things we're talking about as far as jobs, um, would would require um, an educational component. And I don't know, um, and you know, I could have asked you or Magnolia off, offline too, but you know, are we including you know, our junior college system here in the region, you know, the, the current um, uh, people? Because we have tried in the past to generate some job training we tried in the past to do some projects and, you know, I think they're, you know, kind of limited at the moment to sort of, you know, EMS training and then some um, um, LVN training is where we are. And it needs to be much more robust. You know, we worked for a while on childcare, you know, trying to get people uh, to take classes in childcare. So I don't know where we are on that because I just feel that that is so integral to how we move forward. Um, so I'd like to to see a little bit more attention given. And, you know, that's just not for the local government committee. That would be for all of and uh, whether or not uh, they're on the HRTC, I'm not sure. But um, I, I just think that that is a piece that I keep listening hard for. I'm listening for you know, when if, if the end result we want after all of this is more jobs for the regions, then I think I'm still kind of waiting to see how the larger overall guidance from the state boils down into that. I feel like sort of still waiting for for clarity on that. So those are those are some of my thoughts. But I appreciate everybody else's input and and hearing what uh, people have to say. But I'm you know looking for ways forward. I guess. Um, and, I, and, and Mary, I would just note we just to answer really quick Linda's question. We have reached out and and formally do have 
two representatives from, well, one from Syracuse College Center and um, a representative from the Kern Community College District um, on the eight, two subcommittees, but I don't think they've been active, able to actively participate, which is a challenge. So I'm hoping maybe, Mary, that's something you could help us with. <laughs> yeah, good, good plan. And I think that, I mean, in, in my in my role too, I think the model would be high school students are getting more exposure to the careers. They're getting more information about what they're interested in. And they go to community college and they have an internship in the field that they're interested in. And then that employer in the um, then works with them while they're getting more degrees or, you know, get a certificate and then an associate's. And, um, and there's, and I think it's so exciting that we can really collaborate and um, combine efforts um, and, and make sure that, you know, maybe Inyo County can um, apply for a $350,000 K-16 proposal to fund internships in education. Maybe they can use that funding to put more um, students in childcare opportunity, you know, more students working in childcare centers. Maybe that can be used to put more students interning at the hospital. So I think there's a lot that we can do together. Um, and sorry, I've been talking so much on this. I'm not trying to hijack this meeting, but I think that really, I also want to recognize that what the work that Sierra Business Council is doing is huge right now. It's so hard to bring together all of these groups and inform everyone and um, and it's a new program. And, and I think that um, moving forward, I, I think that this has been really helpful with just sharing, you know, updates. I think for all of us to even know that this is available is something that's great that as we have conversations, we know in the back of our mind, okay, there's this surf funding. And as things are developed more, we'll be updated more. So we can, when we're having conversations with a different county, we can say, oh, did you know you can apply for this? And did you know that the hospital applied for this? And so I think, but we're still in the process, they're still in the process of building it. So I just want to recognize all the hard work with, it's a lot, um, and just building a whole new structure. So I'll stop talking though. I'll chime in we on welcome that. welcome your participation. Go ahead, Michael. Yeah, just real quick, because it's something we've been talking about a lot here. There used to be a program in Calaveras County, um, a high school, like summer work program. And we still, to this day, have employees at CCWD that started here through that program that have been here for decades, but the program no longer exists. And, and we've kind of tried to, you know, just create some sort of program like that in the, in the last few years, but we, it gets hung up on, you know, the, 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 the HR details are a lot trickier to navigate now than they were, I think a few decades ago. And I don't know if that's why the program went away or not, but I think something, you know, we could use some technical assistance um, in, in helping set that up. And so we've been reaching out to local superintendents in the Office of Education, but if there was a source of funding that could help us with the, you know, the establishment of a program like that and funding for that program, um, you know, it's something we'd, we would love, you know, it doesn't necessarily create additional jobs, but giving local um, high school students and junior college students a pathway to a really good career in you know in 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 the community I think is, is something we could absolutely help with and we want to do but it's um, it's been a challenge. Great, that's excellent uh, feedback for this. And Mary Mary's already ready to get you some money. I already <laughs> sent her an email. Yeah, and Great. case seems not for that. Um, it's for it actually maybe engineering. So maybe. Great. Um, continuing through, um, Jen, do you have any other thoughts? I'm good, Stacy. Thank okay. you. <laughs> David? You okay? Do yeah, I'm okay. okay. I just had to find the right button. Okay, good. <laughs> I think after two years on Zoom, I didn't know how to do this. Um, I think, you know, we're all local government in some in some ways. And so we're actually used to thinking that we're actually going to make some decisions. Um, but in this case, it's the High Road Transitions Council that's going to make the decisions. We're just an input piece. And so I think it's worthwhile keeping that in the, in the, into, in the back of our minds that, that we don't get to make the final decisions. That's all I have. Great. 
thank you for that reminder. And another thing I think that's, you know, again, that's that's different about California Jobs First Surf is the focus on um, disinvested communities and um, listening to voices that maybe haven't been heard in, in traditional or past economic development um, efforts and bringing new people to the table. So I think that's that's part of it too. Not that you all don't do that as local government representatives, because I actually think every single one of you that I you know that I've worked with do that really well in your in your jobs as as local electeds. Uh, Rosemary. Yeah, just real quickly, I'd like to suggest um, that maybe we could build on what Michael was um, laid out. At least what I think I heard him say. I here in Mariposa County, we have a program at our high school where we introduce young, um, starting in freshman year, uh, our high school students um, uh, to careers, primarily firefighting and law enforcement. Um, and then healthcare is sort of an afterthought. But I think the question really becomes one of can we, how do we make these programs more robust? And um, I, you know, can we set up a forum where we have conversations about what we're doing right now and how we might um, expand on those to introduce more of a career path um, element. You know, the answer is I'm sure, you know, through this process we could, there is actually too a, a workforce development subcommittee. And I wonder if that's the place, you know, and, and again, the, you know, the, this process and structure of the HRTC, especially subcommittees is meant to be iterative. So, you know, if that somehow needs to change that workforce development gets woven perhaps through all the subcommittees. I mean, that's, that's one, one top line observation I'd make in this process is it's, it's not a discrete thing. I think discrete projects that, that work region wide could come out of it, but um, that it can't really be considered separately. You know, it's like there's there's work to, workforce development needs in everything, and yeah. But I, I also, could, you know, considering all of Jaren's comments, that that seems like something um, ripe for implementation that could, you know, really get going maybe more quickly than, say, an infrastructure project or a, a you know, a whole new program because. Um, yeah, what we're hearing from Mary and others in the community college and education system is that yeah, these pro programs exist, they just need to get built up or like in, in the example Michael gave us, uh, you know, ref reformed, brought back to life. Thank you, Stacy, And thank you, David, for your comments. See, I really did enjoy being here with you. <laughs> All right, we are at time and that is really um you know kind of the the main gist of the meeting was to to get some feedback so um and and give you an update any closing thoughts and, and Kristen I, do you have any Kristen or Erica any any closing thoughts you'd like to offer well I just thank you for the engagement and we look forward to seeing you next Friday whoever can make it to the HRTC and uh, all your comments are always appreciated and um, that's what this group is for. Yeah. Just a I'll... quick. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to echo Kristen's uh, sentiments. We appreciate all of your input, and we have uh, tons of feedback from the last few months that you know we'll be going through next week to show that you know we hear you loud and clear. I just had a quick scheduling questions. So I had two calendar invites for today. One was for a local government subcommittee meeting from 10 to 12. And then I don't have a calendar invite for the HRTC meeting next week. So I don't know if I'm on the wrong distribution list or or not, but um, yes. did anybody else get two HRTC calendar invites week? for today's meeting at two different times? Huh. But it, yeah, but you did at least get the correct one for nine to ten thirty, Michael. Yeah, and then I have a second one for ten to twelve. Who was that one from? Like who who sent you that one? You know what? I don't have any. 
sorry, I may have just put it on there as a placeholder and I had the wrong time on it. So maybe that was, that was my mistake. Mm. Um, but if I don't, I don't have an invite for the HRTC meeting is so maybe I can email you to get on the distribution list for that one as well. I don't automatically invite the entire stakeholder group to the gotcha. HRTC meetings. If you RSVP, okay. you'll receive an email with the calendar invite pretty soon. So. No, okay, no worries. Just wanted to make sure I wasn't missing something. Yeah, and I'll I'll send out after this meeting. I'll send out the yeah. I mean, I like just as an example. I don't even like as staff at least. I I haven't gotten an, a calendar invite for that for that that Zoom okay. meeting unless I go through the registration process. It's that that is one thing. I mean, just this this in in that sense, kind of logistics. This this project is you know, quite a challenge. So um, okay. I'll, I'll make sure to send out that registration form so that you can register and get a calendar invite. I no problem. Of, I just didn't want to live by our calendars. I, said, I just want to make yeah. sure I wasn't missing something. So sure. yeah, thank you all. Good meeting. The other thing too, um, we could consider doing Erica, you know, we, we could always just put a placeholder for it on your calendars through a uh, local government subcommittee. I, I just mm -hmm. don't want to further confuse things, but yeah, we can yeah. we can discuss that, Stacey, but I, I don't think that's a bad idea at all. Yeah. With maybe the registration link or whatever. Yeah. And same yeah. thing with the, the office hours. If you yeah. Want. We don't want to clutter up your calendars, but we don't want you to miss anything. So right. yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you all. Great. Thanks, everybody. Really appreciate it. Um, Erica, can you keep the meeting going for a second? Sure. Okay. Just cause I, it, yeah. How do you, how do you make it so that you can copy and paste chat? So you have to go into like the settings on the browser and then edit the settings. So you go, um, oh, I just had it. Um, <clears throat> that log should be part of the recording that gets downloaded or that's, that's saved to the cloud. I think that the chat doesn't get saved in the... Yeah, we need to make, I mean. So I'll go in and edit it right after this, but you basically, um, have to go in to. But isn't it the meeting host who has to allow it? Well, no, it's in like the Zoom meeting specific settings. So I think I have to go on the browser and then edit the settings within Zoom. Anyway, I'm just trying to get the MAG's field person's phone number. That's all I'm trying to do before you oh. close it. <laughs> um, well, it's in, you can see the chat though, can't yeah, you? Yeah, no, but I didn't want you okay. to stop the meeting before I was able to get it. That's all I was trying to do. <laughs> Did you get it? I yeah. have it. Let me, let it me get it. Yeah, because I'm gonna call her right now. So, okay. yeah. Um, do you want, don't want me to just read it to you? No, I, I got it. I, I can see it now. Okay. I just didn't want you to close the thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. But yeah, it's just, just I, I want to make sure we're capturing this. And especially, you know, considering that we, you know, are hearing issues of frustration. The last thing we want to do is be like, oh, yeah, you put like, you know, like a thesis in the chat and we don't, you know, we spaced right. it. Don't have right. it. Yeah, I, I figured out how to do it. So I'll do it um right now. And then it'll, but it'll change the settings for the whole surf zoom. Is that okay with surf team? Cool. I mean, I don't know and why it should allow care. it. And then from there, it should allow it for all. I think all users will be able to save the chat, which is fine. I think. I would think that'd be Casey, fine. Yeah. One of, one of yeah. my fears that we're going to have to manage the expectation that surf is like, this golden bucket of cash coming down. Yeah. And, uh, they you know, know it. They, all these guys know that. Though. I know. But, yeah. Jaren's like, I think, and that's why his sense of urgency. I like, I want to get my application in, but he's so Tuolumne County focused. And somehow we have to tacitly let him know that this is a real, I don't no, know. I, you know I, don't, I don't think he is though. I, you know, that what they're, cause I, they, they had me sit in on one of their meetings and they're uh -huh. really, I, I, I kind of, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I, he's not the only one saying that to me. And I think there's a way that we could thread this needle where you're letting them look at projects and yeah. letting, you know, letting them get excited. I, I yeah. do think we're, right now we're, in, you know, it, it, it's hard. We're having to 
write this whole thing, but no. I think we really need to, in my opinion, take what he's saying to heart and, and right. balance. You know, Brad, Barbara Hayes gave me that feedback too, and I, you know, I I respect her opinion. She's like, you got to give them something. You can't just I keep agree. talking I'm about not, planning. Yeah, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you. That was like, I, you know, honestly, next Friday we we need to put the projects up and just talk, but also let them know that this is there is a process, and I love that you know. Maybe if we, I don't, do you have any graphic that shows the Sierra SRTI? Oh yeah. And I, I mean, honestly, I, can you, can you uh, every, that? Yeah, can Elaine, you... Elaine already sent it. I don't, I don't know who she sent it to Magnolia. Can you forward that email to Kristen and Erica? But I, this is why I was kind of wanting us to maybe, um, it, it's like the, the project thing that got developed, that's proprietary to MLTPA. And that's why I was yeah. kind of pushing us to like, Let's work with them and just use their system. Like they already have it developed. You well, can, we can, you can consider but we it. also have to attach the yeah. priorities and goals for so like I, I take that yeah type, the, the the process and then adopt it similar because it's everybody says it worked great. That's great. We don't need to reinvent the wheel, but we do have to apply what little criteria we know from the state and and if we can maybe even draw a process map and this is what we're thinking and get buy in next week, it might help. Oh yeah, no, and I wasn't thinking like yeah, use SRTI for for next week. I mean, yeah. honestly, I think what 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 uh, Mary was saying was you know like they just want to see so, sort of the. Oh, that's yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah and yeah. I mean, some of them like some of these projects honestly are a little bit ridiculous. Like, I want to move my chamber office down. I know. Like, okay, well, you know, and she called. She's like, should I submit that? And what are you going to say? And I'm no, just we telling... tell them everything. Submit it all because yeah. And we brought it up in business subcommittee because she was there. And I'm like, maybe there's another, that's a great project, but maybe there's another localized solution that we can find. Like, I'm yeah. like, why don't we just put them in the business resource center? I don't know. Well, exactly. But also to me, there's like a bucket I would create out of that, that we're yeah. seeing is downtown revitalization. Totally. <laughs> oh, there's yeah. old shitty buildings and, you know, yeah. you need to move and that out could of be a regional, a, yeah. like, a, like for the region, we look at all downtown revitalization. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's that's on us to look at. And um, anyway, but it, yeah, we got to have some discussion. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I don't know if you like put, you know, create a, in the a meantime, slide or a document and you just like stamp on it, you know, these are not yeah. funded, no yeah. guarantees. No, and they're, and they're also not applications. You know, yeah. you guys pulled out a form, like stop calling an application, Jim. Yeah. yeah. And well, in, in the meantime, I'm looking at like 747 pages of edits to reviews but yeah but, but if, what i can yeah. do is i i've already been looking at it so i'll just yeah. i'll just basically create like a cleaner version of what's been submitted and then maybe eric what we could do is maybe we just post it on the website and then just be like put it in the public drive and just make it available so people can go in and look and then we'll go over that next week and just be like look if you want to see what's being submitted like you're more than welcome to we're posting it and just leave it at that, but. And well, and let's, but also let's do for next week, a slide that says, okay, for stewardship projects. Yep. Workforce tra or healthcare work, or, cause there are buckets. Yep. I was yeah, gonna revitalization. That's a perfect one. Yeah. You know? And we're gonna organize it by sector. And then based on the feedback, feedback that we've gotten like workforce development or. Yeah. A strategic planning or like organize it in that language yeah like, based on their feedback yeah and then see that'll help just kind of wrap their heads around yeah that getting excited piece which is great i mean it's really great to hear it's not that it's not that we don't want to hear it right it's just can we just wait like a couple weeks <laughs> nope <laughs> nope can't wait no, and I gotta do it now <laughs> built the trust to to keep to to yeah. say wait a couple of weeks like they you know yeah. and and it's part of it not our fault because it's, it's the way the state process is but yeah. I think we just have to realize that like we have to absorb a little bit of that and try to push out something better than what we've gotten from the state. It's <sighs> a lot. I hear you, Stacy. Yeah. Mm. And now I'm gonna go look at the how many pages did you say, Chris? No, I don't know. I'm like, I just uh, some. Yeah, I don't know. I think actually stakeholder mapping, ECDEV, climate, good like for now. I took all your comments and either incorporated them or reworded them, Stacy. And I mean it's for now, it's done. We have to just like Yeah. I'm on um 
labor and i don't know I'm, it's it's hurting my head yeah it's i don't really think i've happened. looked at that yet so maybe i can look at that i'd stay out of it for a while okay <laughs> <laughs> or I, mean, I can just wait and be pinged when ready but i feel like i i don't also yeah. want to be like well because i, I mean let's I be honest a... steve isn't gonna look at it so i'm not gonna no. wait for steve to look at it no, you know no, what i mean can't. like yeah he, he doesn't have time and yeah, um no. not that you and i do either but i but i maybe if we divide and conquer but i'm gonna rework i'm gonna focus heavily on this today because it needs a lot of work and then um industry cluster yeah anyway maybe and i don't know what to do about public health but um, I, yeah, I mean, I just my recommendation again is just take out the the things at the end that say we should do tobacco education. That just seems honestly kind of dumb to me. To well, it point. seems like very 1970s too. Yeah, and and that's already being done, and so take those recommendations and just leave it as is, and be like, yeah, eh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's uh, it, yeah. Honestly, perfection is the enemy of done. I'm reminding yeah. myself of that. Yeah but it needs to be better than it is now. So I'm, my commitment today is I'm going to, I have another deliverable. I have a meeting at 1130 with EDA, but I'm going to just head down on this today and get it as far as I can. And, uh, and I'm going to put some stuff back off to um, Tallulah to dive into, because there's some things we need to support. That's All my, right, well, let me know. I have time today and, you know, I'm going to work a little bit tomorrow because I've got to, a meet with John Wentworth so I might as well do some other stuff <laughs> uh, okay all right all right okay I've got I got the numbers so we are good thanks everyone all right thanks I okay. warned Kara that she'll probably get some sort of feedback from Jaren so oh my god she's used to it. I think she spends hours on the phone with him she does and then she has to have a, like a drink afterward yeah because he's a lot He's a lot. I and mean, he's not wrong, but he's just a lot. It's like, yeah, work in the public sector. You should know that there's pace and to this, but whatever. Yeah. People come in the board of super like, yeah, fix housing, do it, build some houses. You yeah. Know? Yeah, <laughs> you exactly. Tell them, no, we can't, we can't do it that fast. Yeah, we have a $63 billion deficit. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah that's gonna be interesting. Good luck with that one, Stacy. <laughs> well, luckily, Kara really takes the brunt of that. So, oh. but I am going to try to call him later. Please. Yeah. Cool. All right. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Great meeting. Yeah. Interesting meeting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're <right>. not shy. <laughs> no. And then uh, the um, the <clears throat> settings are updated. So we should be able to save and chat now. Um, Not on this meeting quite yet, but the next Oh, not on this one. Save. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's not letting me copy and paste. And Magnolia, if I have time tomorrow evening, I will shoot you a text, but I think I'm going to be on coach's program. So I'm not sure how much free time I would have, but I would love to get together if possible. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks everyone. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye.